and it's day one and you walking in there on the first day, man, you in there, man, but you feel something. It's right in here, man, and it's screaming, and it's yelling, and it's saying, release me, and it's saying, I am the number one determinant of the success or failure of my students. Hey, y'all, when you get back, kick some butt, and I'll see you in the winner's circle celebrating your victory. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, you got this, you got this, you got this. Thank you, everybody. And we are live. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to week 189 of the AP and New Principles Academy. Let me see who we got in the building this morning. We got Mona Abamolak in the building. We got Thomas Holmes in the building. And she said good morning to my wife. Hey, wife upstairs. Mona said hello to you. We got Thomas uh, Holmes in the building. Rodney Richardson, principal. I'll give me a say principal. Assistant principal. Arlette Johnson, assistant principal of the year out there in Connecticut. She's going to be my guest um, a little bit later, but she'll be on here. We got Marsha Marsha Poe out there in San Diego, Takesha High, Constance Sherrod, March 242004 from Jersey. <laughs> we got Dr. Stacy Ann B, Principal Dot McKee Vegeta in the building. Oh, we got Sojourner Truth in the building. Jeanette Brown is here. Morning to you. You checked in early too, man. You said you got the you got all three of some of your faves in the building this morning. <laughs> we got Charles and Yabri out there in Dallas. Scott Wiley, Edgar Ray. Yeah, let me know where y'all are coming from too. I see most of them. We see Sher Principal Sherrod Laws Hotep out there in Greenville, North Carolina. Rashad Davis in Vegas. Lisa Bolt Debose Walker, Central Texas. Sean Hurt up there in the D. Uh, that's Detroit for those that don't know. Jacqueline Harriet, Halifax, Nova Scotia. John Herrex, Jasmine Harris out there in sunny California. It's sunny Jersey here, Jasmine, but it's cold sunny Jersey, right? It's uh, where we have Melissa Jones Chunu out there in Tulsa, Arcella, Arcella Austri, Street, Marcus Morris, Michael Benton up there in Cincinnati. I was just there the other day. You probably know that. Um, Let's see where we at. Jeanette said Hotep. That's right, man. That's right. Peace. Uh, Stacey L. Joy, always good to see you. Marcus Morris, out South Carolina. Lavelle Johnson is in the building. The Alonda McKinney out there in Arkansas in the building. Charlena Hattie, Norfolk, Virginia. There's my man, Josh Tovar, MPA Jaguars. Uh, Garland ISD, that's in Texas in the Dallas area. For those that don't know, Laurie Sewell Richards out in Michigan, up in Michigan. Josh, yeah, I think I got the mirror clean, Josh. I think I got it clean, man. <laughs> David Isaacson, uh, good morning to you. There's the wife, the queen of the castle, man. The castle. Y'all should see this place, man. It's palacious, right? <laughs> I got this little small joint, man, it, but I love it, man. <laughs> we got Principal Karen Fletcher in the building, Tampa, Florida. Where we at? Michelle Harris, Sandra Krause Ayers. Best way to start my Saturday. You got that right, Sandra. I tell people all the time. I ain't, you know, I ain't boasting. I ain't patting myself on the back, but I'm just telling people, man, I, I haven't seen anything like this on the internet, right? Forget about on 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 just you know in terms of podcasts and live stream i ain't seen nothing like this in the entire world i haven't seen 
right? If you're a leader, if you're an administrator, if you're an aspiring administrator, there's really no place else to be at 1055 on a Saturday morning. It's, it's really not, right? I don't say that. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm not being facetious. I'm being real, right? So this is the place to be. Where we at? We got Tina Floyd, Tina Flood in the building, man. She's out there in Plainfield, used to be in East Orange, doing her thing. Good to see you, Tina. Uh, that, now, you, you here for the Saturday Academy? Or are you just here for Dr. Snee, Dr. Smith Snee? Let's like, like, let's let's get that part straight, right? <laughs> I'm going to get it started, y'all. We got here uh L Lizia Jordan, Dr. Roz Gaskins in the building. And I think I'm a, I'm gonna end it right here unless I just see one of them local homies that I just got a shout out. You know, I don't I don't see anybody, but look like everybody's international. But we got Vanessa Zeskin. I gotta I gotta shout her out, man. She's been rocking with us for so long. And Cynthia Farmer as well. I see y'all, I see you. All right, here go one local homie. I'm gonna close it right here. Another plain field head, Greg Sneed in the building. I'm gonna stop, and I should say principal Greg Sneed. I'm gonna stop it right there, y'all. We got a lot to talk about, man. My my guess. Let me tell y'all before I greet y'all, my guests, man, I've been knowing them for like 24 years. They were on my staff. It's our first time together in the same. I see I see the both of them separately, but this is the first time together in the same space. So you see I'm a little bit more hyped than normal this early on because I can't wait for this conversation. But but let me just greet you right now by saying good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week 189 of the AP and New Principles Academy. Hey man, let me let me let me ask y'all something, man. How y'all feel this day, today? How you feel this morning? I was trying to say today and this morning at the same time and I created a word, so let me do that. How y'all feel this morning, man? Right? And as I always say, sometimes we we ain't where we want to be. You know, y'all in leadership, man. <laughs> These are not easy jobs. I was just talking to my guest about that. That's partly why I do what I do now. This is not easy work. This is some of the most difficult, challenging, overwhelming work that there is on the planet. And I will put being the president of the United States in that category. Y'all responsible for all these lives in a building. That is not easy work. You, so here you are leading children, but leading adults simultaneously. That is not easy work. Most leaders are leading one category and it's typically adults. But here you got this other group of folks called children in the same space and you're leading them at the same time. That's not easy. So it's understandable if somebody may be feeling a little down on a Saturday morning. But I'm going to say this to you. That's fine. But you got to lift yourself back up before you walk into that building on Monday. So if I can just give you a little bit of my energy to get us started in terms of you getting back to where you need to be, those who are not in that space, I'll tell you how I feel. Even if I'm faking the funk, I'm still going to tell you how I feel. I'm on fire! Woo! Woo! That's how I feel, man. I said, hey, ain't no shame to my game, man. I'm letting the world know I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. Look here, y'all. Let me, let me, let me say welcome to the first time. Matter of fact, before I even get there, let me shout out, man. Let me shout out to the North Carolina Principals and Assistant Principals Association. Man, they brought me in. They saw fit to bring me in as the opening keynote speaker the other day. Woo! They said, we don't want you to just do one keynote. We want you to do two keynotes. That's not normal, y'all. I only had one. Of, I've been speaking 37 years, and it's only been one other time that I did two keynotes in a day. And that was in a town called uh, Hayes, Kansas. And that was an experience in and of itself. I, I need to write a book about that day. I, I could do a whole book just on the day. Hayes, Kansas. <laughs> it, they, 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 they had me leaving out of there like, like not, not, not in the best of moods, right? But, uh, but that's what that's for another time. But, but, but this one the other day in, in, in um, Pinehurst, North Carolina, and then as I always do, I said, "Where's my AP and New Principals Academy family? Where y'all at?" They, like, woo, come on up here, man. We take this big picture. Everywhere I go, it's fam. 
Y'all hear me? Everywhere I go, it's AP and New Principles Academy fam. They in there. They come strong in those buildings, man. So we take a picture. Then I preach my little sermon. You know, I got to talk to my fam. Like, we got to give them the different message from the keynote, man. We got to give them the, the, the true message between us because we fam. You understand what I'm saying? So we do that. And then, you know, then we move on. So shout out to them. And then there's another district. I'm not going to name the district. I got mentees in different parts of the country. So I got this, this, this one mentee principal in a school. We'll just say in the Cincinnati area, but I'm not going to name the district. So shout out to that district. Shout out to that school. Shout out to that principal. And I, I, as I told the principal, I hope she's on here right now. I told her, I said, your growth and development for me is personal. It's personal. It ain't just professional. It's personal. Right. So I'm, I'm going to leave that right there. Welcome to the first timers. But if it's your first time, that means you missed 188 sessions. So go to the AP and New Principles Academy YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification button. And that way you get them when I come on live because we're live on YouTube right now. Live on LinkedIn, live, live on Facebook and live on Twitter. So make sure that you subscribe to that YouTube channel. And then binge watch all 188 sessions. We've been doing this for four years, man. I've been sitting at this thing for four years. I have not missed one Saturday, not one. When I speak somewhere, I tell the people, I'll speak on a Saturday, but I got to do this. So either book, either book me to schedule me to speak before 1055 Eastern or after. I don't, you could pay me. I don't care what you pay me. I ain't taking that money. I'm doing because I got to do this first. Everything revolves around this, right? So make sure that you are uh, you come back for for week 180, uh, 190 next week. Uh, be sure to like and follow the AP and New Principles Academy Facebook page. Oh man, this ain't just Saturdays. Saturday is the live stream. Sunday is the commentary. I write a commentary just like when I was a principal. Wrote a commentary every Sunday once email became a thing, and I write a commentary every. Sunday morning, I get up early, write a commentary, post it by 10 o'clock. I didn't do it last year, last week because I was getting off the cruise ship, man. So, you know, but I'm, I ain't on the cruise ship today. I'm in I'm in the cruise house. You know what I'm saying? So so I have it tomorrow. So just make sure you um like and follow that page. In fact, going back to the YouTube, we got 19,800 subscribers. My goal is 20,000. Let's hit that. And then on the on the Facebook page, we got 9,800 followers. I want to take that to 10,000. So hit me up on both platforms. I'm almost ready to bring up my guests. Uh, real quick, y'all. The books that accompany this platform are the newest one, The Assistant Principal Identity, Protecting Your Leadership Mindset, Impact, Fervor, and Authenticity. The Assistant Principal 50. The Aspiring Principal 50. The Principal 50. And is my school a better school because I lead it? So you can get all these on Amazon. Just go to Amazon, get yourself a copy, get your get your get your homie a copy while you're there. Uh, get your colleague a copy, get somebody a copy, get them get them and 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 bring me back. Like last week when I did this, y'all brought every one of these in the top 100 and um on Amazon. I appreciate y'all for that. And you brought some of my other books there too. I didn't show y'all all the other ones. You know I wrote like 13 of them, right? I ain't got time to show you all them books. So um but 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 go to Amazon and get them books and then I'll check the sales um the, the sales ranking later to see if y'all took care of business. Lastly, um hit that share button, y'all. Hit that repost button on LinkedIn. Hit that like button on 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 um YouTube. No, on all the platforms, hit that like button, y'all. That like button is what manipulates them algorithms, right? See, y'all got y'all got to understand how this technology works, man. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Even if you dislike it, like it anyway, right? But you 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 gonna love it. I promise you, man. I, let, let me give y'all my monologue real quick, and then I got I want to bring my guest up. My monologue. What am I doing? It's entitled, what am I doing towards sustaining my leadership? I do these monologues because I bring on so many guests, but I got to get my words in there too before I bring my guests. Because with my guests, I'm just asking questions. Um, what am I doing towards sustaining my leadership? Hit that retweet button. Hit that share button. Let them know we ready. What am I doing towards sustaining it? See, it's one thing you put in all this work to obtain the position. 
right? So you're doing what you got to do. I'm trying to get hired. I'm trying to interview well. I'm trying to be seen and noticed and all that kind of thing. Okay, so you got it. You're in there. Some of you, you've been in there, let's say, five years, right? Some of you have been in there 15 years, whatever it is. But here's my question. What are you doing to sustain it, right, over the long haul? See, it's not just getting the job or just being in there the five years, whatever it is. You got to last because remember, the world is evolving. The world is shifting. I left the principalship in 2011. Those are not the same kids that are in there today, y'all. You know that. That's a different youngster. People ask me all the time, would you go back to being a principal? I mean, it's in my blood. I always want to go back to be a principal. Every day I, I dream about this stuff, like every night. But I always say to them, well, if I did, I'd have to reinvent myself because this is not the same youngster. This youngster of today has been exposed to a different level of technology that the youngster I left did not have exposure to. It wasn't invented yet. The, the, the social media is not what it is now. Everything's different. The world shifted. So therefore, with my question, you have to shift. You can't be stuck in your old ways. 2011, Kefele can't do this. It got to be 2023, 24, Cafe. That's a different guy. I don't know him. I haven't met him. I know him as a speaker. I know him as a consultant, but I do not know him as a principal. I've never met him before. So when people ask me that question, I don't know. It's a different kid. And I'm going to tell you something else, and I'm going to go to my guest. It's a different teacher. It's not the same teacher. Like, like I, I hope nobody receives this wrong. I hope you receive this the way I'm going to give it to you. When I was interviewing teachers, it was unheard of that a teacher would show up with tattoos all up, down the, up and down the forearm and possibly on the neck. That was unheard of. That would cancel you right there when you walked into space in most places. But now, ain't nobody looking at no tattoo. And, no, and, and you can't judge no teacher on a tattoo. You can't, the person come in for the interview, you see all the tats, and now you like, you old school. Oh, oh no, let me, get, let me get her up out of here real quick so I could get the next interview. No, nah, nah, that ain't going to work no more because the world is shifted. So if that was your thinking based on how you used to think, it's a new day. You don't find too many people ain't got a tat somewhere on their body, man, you know? So I'm, I'm just using that as a example of many examples that I could give you, but this is not a solo day for me. So I just want you to think about the question, how am I sustaining myself? What am I learning? What am I reading? What am I engaging in? Who am I talking to? What am I exposing myself to so that I remain relevant? as the years progress, as opposed to you stuck in your old self because you like old self, but it ain't compatible with a new day. That's my commentary, y'all. Hey, y'all, I got this guest and I, I came up with this topic. I'm the leader. So what? Now what? And I want them to talk about this today. So let me get my, my guest on up here, man. Got my guest in the building. I got the good doctor. Demetrius Smith's need in the building. Let me say hello to you first, Doc. How you doing this morning? I'm doing wonderful. I'm on fire. That hey, monologue put me on fire, Principal Kefele. You the same Kefele you were back in 1999. I know. I know. That part of you just hotter, hotter, high as far as your <laughs> fervor and as far as your energy. The older you get, the more energy you have. <laughs> you know something. Before I go, before I go to Chase, man, I, you know, I, I think about that a lot. You know, I say every everything you just said, I think about, and it contradicts everything I said a minute ago, right? Because mm -hmm. that part I kept. Mm -hmm. but there's some other stuff I said I got to evolve, right? I got I, I, I got the good principal, the good brother, H. Otto Bakari Chase in the building. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Hotel. Peace. 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 Those of you that don't know what we just said, that's the way we opened up school every day. When, when, when we were together at Sojourn Truth Middle School over the PA system, Hotep 
to the entire school and their response was hotep we see him throughout the course of a day hotep mr Fale, hotep hotep mr chase and back in, back in them days hotep miss smith mrs smith and now it's dr smith sneeze so you know but that's you know that hotep means peace and and, yes, and what there, there's no word i don't think in the english language outside of love you know, I guess mm -hmm. they kind of go hand in glove. Those are the two most powerful words that, that we can articulate to one another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love and peace, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, let me let me read these bios, y'all. Hey, y'all out there in AP and New Principles Academy land, hit the share button, hit the retweet, let them know we here, we on. Dr. Detria Smith Sneed, um, as principal of Pin Pinnacle Academy High School for Plainfield Public School District, Dr. Detria Smith Snead is a passion is passionate about public education and ensuring academic excellence for all students. However, Dr. Smith Snead isn't just principal of Pinnacle Academy. Here it is, y'all. She and her team established this new alternative for public uh, for Plainfield Public Schools. So it's an alternative school. In its first year of operation, Pinnacle Academy graduated 33 of 35 seniors. That's amazing. That's 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 powerful work. Dr. Smith Snead comes with more than two and a half decades <clears throat> experience in public education as a middle school social studies teacher, district supervisor of social studies, K-8, and high school vice principal, K-8 principal, and currently high school principal. Dr. Smith Snead is an alumnus of Kane College of New Jersey, currently Kane University, which I'm from the same, and holds an MED in administration supervision, as well as a PhD in educational leadership from Caldwell University. Dr. Smith Sneed research topic, the effect of racial identity on self-concept and their motivation for black high school students to pursue mm. post-secondary education in New Jersey public urban school districts. Dr. Smith Sneed is currently married to her husband, Sean, who is also an educator, and they have two daughters, Noel and Skyler. Powerful stuff, powerful stuff. And we got Principal Hubert Otto Bakari Chase. Hubert Otto Bakari Chase is an award winning educator with 25 years of successful experience. I'm gonna read a little quicker, y'all, because a little longer than the other one. As an educational leader, teacher, curriculum writer, athletic coach, and youth mentor specializing in urban and alternative education. He has successfully led, supported, or developed schools and educational programs, especially for at-risk youth. Brother Chase earned his bachelor's degree from William Patterson University, his master's in urban education and administration from New Jersey City University, and is currently pursuing his doctorate in education leadership at St. Elizabeth University. Seeing education as the vehicle to uplift and empower the community, Brother Chase, also known as Brother Otto, has a passion for working and understand under working with underserved youth. During his tenure, he has been the principal of the Blue Knights Academy Alternative High School in Chancellor Avenue Elementary School of Irvington, an assistant principal at West Side High School in Newark, New Jersey, a vice principal at East Orange Campus High School, and a and at George Washington Carver Elementary School in East Orange, New Jersey. Prior to his role as administrator, Brother Otto embarked on his educational career as a social studies and history teacher on the middle and high school level for East Orange Public Schools. He is currently serving as principal of the Augusta Preschool Academy. Y'all hear me again. He's currently serving as the principal of Augusta Preschool Academy within the Irvington School District. This gives him the unique perspective of being an educational leader with knowledge and, ex and experience of student development from pre-kindergarten through 12th grade. During his educational career, uh, Brother Chase has achieved numerous accolades and accomplishments, including being named Teacher of the Year for Glenwood Academy, Glenwood Campus Alternative Program at East, of East Orange, now called Fresh Start Academy. He was awarded the Pride in Public Education Award by the East Orange Education Association and was recognized for community and organizing and mentoring work by the East Orange Mayor, the good mayor, Ted Green. Brother Chase aims to continue working on behalf of urban inner city communities professionally as an educator and personally as a community activist. He has worked with alongside numerous organizations to address issues of social justice and to eradicate the ills of poverty, violence, and racism. And finally, he's equally committed to his family as a proud husband to his wife. Is it pronounced Libra? Yes. Yeah, Libra and his and, and father of an amazing son, Ahadu. And here we go. Hey, y'all, powerful stuff, powerful bio, Chase. And uh, 
I'm ready for this. I've been waiting for this for, for a minute. My son asked me yesterday, he said, Dad, you, you excited about this one? Because <laughs> he knows, you know, y'all, y'all go mm -hmm. back with me. Hey, uh, Dr. Smith Sneed, I'm 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 gonna be formal with y'all in terms of your titles. And, and I should have told you that off camera, but uh you can read between the lines as to why I want to be formal with your titles, man. You earn this stuff. Absolutely. And I ain't I ain't, I ain't getting on here calling you Detria. You put in too much time to, to be called doctor. And on this platform, that's who you are. Indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I understand it. That's right. That's right. As an educator, who is Dr. Detria Smith? Wow. You know, I, I feel like um, as an educator, you know, I wear so many hats. I think first and foremost, um, I, I'm a leader. Even when I was in a classroom, you always reminded us of our role way mm -hmm. back when that we are the instructional leaders of our classroom. Right. And we had to maintain control, what we taught, the curriculum and instruction. We had to maintain the climate and culture of our classroom. And I took that very, very seriously. So back then, I knew... I had to one, build relationships with my students. I had to be a team player with my colleagues and I wanted to be um, in compliance with whatever my principal wanted. So, you know, when you talk about who am I as an educator, we can talk about so many different attributes as, you know, dealing with all the stakeholders, dealing with your parents, your students and who they are, dealing with your teachers. You know, so I think as a as an educator, I, I feel like I'm a social emotional expert, especially after the pandemic. I feel like I'm a friend. I'm a sister. I'm a mother. I'm a nurturer. I'm a nurse. I'm a psychologist. I'm all those things, whatever students, teachers and parents need me to be in order for them to get to the next level. So it's just so hard to define. I can't confine it just to one statement. Yeah. Uh, that's that's powerful stuff though you you hit a lot of areas and all those areas can go in a whole lot of different directions right. let me let me go to print i'm gonna call you principal chase uh principal chase um same question <clears throat> as, as an educator who is principal chase you know when i when i uh analyze the question and listen to uh dr smith's lean i was thinking about it myself and i got uh I, i'd like to say what I represent to all of those constituents. Three things, um, culture, most definitely. Um, bringing culture wherever I go, um, only not only in, in my embodiment, but in my leadership style um, is very important to me. Compassion, um, you know, being compassionate with not only my students, but my parents and my staff. I work um, in some very tough environments and without mm -hmm. compassion, we might not understand what those children are bringing. Um, right now, this is before the term ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experience, mm -hmm. existed. I just had a workshop um, where that term was, was there, but we was experiencing students who had ACEs. So having compassion is important with staff and parents as well. And then uh, building community um, is, is, is something that I'm always about. If I could interject, we're in Kwanzaa season. My favorite principle is Ujima, collective work and responsibility. And that was always about building community to me. So um, compassion, culture, and community is who I am as an educator. I love it. I love it. You know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to dive into that, that hoodie you're wearing with step, but maybe you had something. So I'm I'm going to save it. I'm not going to say nothing about it. I'm going to let you do that. Right. So because uh, I, I keep looking, I'm, I'm like, I want to talk about step real quick. But now we, we, we we'll let you do that when, 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 when we get to whenever it's appropriate for you. Yes, sir. You know, you know Dr. Smith Sneed, um, I want to go back into time. 1998, January. Matter of fact, let me go to December of 1997. I am a fifth grade teacher. I say goodbye to my young people in, in that particular class as their teacher for the year in on December 23rd, 1997. And on January the 2nd, 
1998, I'm walking into Sojourner Truth Middle School as a first day assistant principal. You're one of the first people that I meet, mm -hmm. right? I think, I think Chase, you came when I was when I became principal the next year for 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. But you one of the first people that I meet that I met as you spoke in the previous question. I, I had a moment because this is my first time interacting with you since you had your doctor. See, I see you on Facebook, but, but we're having a conversation this, and, and I, I literally had a moment, right? Mm -hmm. As you was, man, I remember back in 98 and here she is, she's Dr. Smith Sneed. I thought you had an EDD, you got the PhD, right? Yes. I, and that's all that in the bio. So I'm saying that to say this to you. I walk in there and make no mistake about it, y'all, the, the two of you and for the folks out there, <clears throat> I envisioned what my life was going to be. I had a lot of work to do. I had a lot of growing to do. What do I know about leadership, right? Nothing. All I knew was teaching fifth graders. So, but I saw the principalship. I saw me being successful, but I saw the writing. I saw the speaking. I saw the consult. I saw that. And I'm I'm a rookie. I'm at my first day. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going on for a little longer than I wanted these, but but hold, wait, work with me for a second. Soon after I began become a VP, I go to Vegas to my first professional development conference. Harry Wong is the keynote speaker. I completely forgot that I was there for PD. The only thing I could see, there's Harry Wong on that stage and I'm going to be on that stage one day too. That's all I could see. So a few years later, Harry Wong and I keynoted on St. Thomas Virgin Islands. He opened, I closed. I said, I saw that. I saw it. I took a picture of the hotel and kept it in my wallet. I saw it. So I'm saying all that to say this to you, Dr. Smith Snead. When we met, because you've done a lot over these past 20, it's 24 years since I met you. Right. Did you see the principalship back then? And, and if so, if not, when did you start seeing it and what sparked it? Well, back then, when you're talking about 1997, 98, you know, yeah. I, I just started my career as a teacher. And I, and I always in the back of my head say eventually I'll be whatever a uh, uh, district supervisor of social studies because, you know, my passion for history and I love to teach history um, as well as in the back of my head. I'll say, OK, I'll be principal one day, but not until you came into the building and you start lighting that fire under us. Literally, you are Literally. the epitome of a teacher leader. You empowered us to be leaders in our classrooms. You empowered us to be leaders in the building. You empowered us to believe in ourselves and to take that step. I always tell people when I used to do my speaking engagements and all that other stuff before, you know, other responsibilities took place in my life, that you were the first one who was like, no, you got to get on that stage and you have to speak. <laughs> and I, I started speaking. I started doing my own um, keynotes and, and all those things. And it was a hard demand at one point in my life before, um, you know, my life shifted into marriage, into having children. However, no, you you empowered me. I went back to school and I, I used to discuss my classes with you and everything that I was doing. I graduated. and um, But I wasn't quite ready. In my mind, I always said I wanted to be in a classroom for at least 10 years because I enjoyed what I was doing so much. And I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed the kids. I enjoyed being in a community that I was in. And I said, um, I'm going to give myself 10 years. So 11 and a half years is when I got my first administrative position. But you were definitely a big part of the reason why I decided to, to transition out of the classroom into administration. And you empowered me to do so much um, during that time, you know, being an eighth grade lead, uh, you know, doing all the field trips and all that other stuff. And, and, you, and it, it just propelled me to believe more in myself and say, you know, I can do this. I, I'm a team builder. I can work with people. I have great interpersonal skills. Um, I, I can get people to to believe in, in what the overall picture is. It's not about me. It's about these children and bringing them to the next level in, in whatever way. 
I love it. Well, I, and I, I appreciate what you said, too. I appreciate all your words. You know, Chase, if I'm not mistaken, you, you came to me, Principal Chase, in, um, in, in, in my first year. And mm -hmm. you came to our, my office. Booker was in the office, my assistant principal. And you were sent to us. And we met, I can still see that hat you were wearing. Right. I, I, I remember I remember you vividly that day we met. Right. And 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 here between you and and and, and Dr. Sneed Smith, I I I I received these two superstar social studies teachers. And we're gonna get deeper with what that is, and we're gonna talk and we're gonna tie that into this whole topic of I'm the principal. So what now what? But 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 as as an intro, what about you? When when did you when when did you develop that interest and and develop that vision of principal leadership? What what was your spark, and when did it occur? So let me let me add on to what my sister just shared, um, because you gave me a word back then that I still use today to define myself, and that's educator. You didn't allow us to call ourselves teachers. And because of that, it opened up a whole different side of it. And my whole mission, which was another piece that, 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 that came from you, you were so inspiring in your model. It wasn't even just what you said. It was what you modeled mm -hmm. um, for us. Um, was that the mission was bigger than the classroom. Absolutely. I didn't have an idea that I wanted to be a principal or go into administration. It wasn't something that was on my radar. Education came to me. It was, it's interesting. But because of you and seeing what you not only modeled, but set as a standard, it became an obligation mm. that I felt it was important for me to go back into uh, school. And I did it during those years, although I didn't get into administration until years later, I was actually in school yeah. because of you lighting that fire under us as Dr. Snee said, and making sure we understood the obligation that we had. Um, and I thank you for it because I'm here today as a direct reflection and because of you. Well. Wow. That's powerful. I, I appreciate you immensely. I appreciate you both immensely. You know, I'm going to turn this into something constructive, y'all. I'm talking to the folks out into, in the AP and New Principal Academy fam out there. Now, hear me, somebody. I, I, I wrestled all week long. I want y'all to hear me. I wrestled all week long. Do I ask them to reflect on me? And I had it in my notes. Yeah, go ahead and do it. Then I took it out. Then I put it back. Then I took it out and all week, that's what I was doing. And then I finally took it out and that was it. So this happened organically, right? As opposed to me triggering it with the question, what are your thoughts on the early principal cafe? Right. Cause that's how I had it worded. So, so here's the thing to the folks out there in the Academy land. Um, what here's is the rhetorical question. I got to pull the mirror up on this one. What will your former teachers say about you? And that's not me patting myself on the back because of what they said. It's just that they, it, it, it came up at the right time. Mm -hmm. What will your former teachers, what will be their reflections of you? What are their reflections of you? Even your current staff, what are they saying? 20 years from now, because this is what we're talking about. We're talking about 24 years later. What are their recollection of your leadership? That's a pertinent question. Maybe we need to do a whole session on that, right? So- what is their recollection of who you were 24 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever it was, 10 years ago, five years ago? Just let that marinate as I move to the next one. Dr. Smith Snee, um, I walk into truth as the principal with a vision. Y'all know it because you, 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 right. you, made, you made my vision happen. And as I wrote here in my notes, Without the two of you singularly, we ain't talking about the rest of the staff now. Without the two of you singularly, my vision does not become my reality. It does not. Because I, wow. because I can have this vision, and I, let me let the audience know what I'm talking about. I walk into this, this, this school, the, the superintendent makes the school, a, the district, a magnet school district. Mm -hmm. 
So we become, when I wasn't there when it happened, but but my school, which I inherited, becomes Sojourner Truth Middle School becomes the school of science and technology. Uh -huh. So I come in with my own personal vision. And I say science and technology is great. So African-American community, who could argue with that? But in my mind, there's a piece missing. And that piece that's missing is African-centered studies. So I go right to the principal superintendent as a first year principal, a baby, a rookie. <laughs> and I say to him, Doc, let me give that science and technology some substance, right? In terms of the people, the community. Let me add this African centered component to it. And I want to call it the Institute of African Centered Studies. So now it's science, technology, and Africans in the Institute of African Centered Studies. He said, that sounds good, but I'm going to hold you accountable. No problem. Right? Let's go. So we go on and we create this program. But the core courses were taught for, for the family out there. These two folks you see on the screen right now. I wrote a curriculum called Introduction to African American. I mean, Introduction to African American History. Dr. Smith Sneed taught the course. Oh, man. What a time. But then... Principal Chase, along with another teacher, Principal Ted Bowler is who he is now. They wrote the curriculum here, this y'all, for a course called Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization, a book written by Tony Browder, Dr. Sneed Smith's book, Journey to Liberation, written by Dr. Malefi Asante. Now, those of you that know those names, then you then your minds were probably just blown. You say, what? They teaching Malefi Asante? And, and Tony Browder in middle school? Yeah. College level co courses, college level books in middle school. But if I didn't have them to teach it, I can't just pull a teacher that teaches history and say, yo, teach this. It ain't going to work. So I had the right people at the right time. Like God brought us together at the right moment. But here's where I'm going, Doc. We had that. And, and I, let, let me just say for the benefit of the audience, I don't think I don't think I need to explain this is probably so obvious. But the reason we needed that that program, that that the, the culture of the school, because it wasn't just what's happening in the classroom is the whole culture of the school. Seven principles. I mean, I can go on and on the, the guests we were bringing into the building to speak to our kids because I needed them kids to see themselves. That's in right. the it's that simple. It's 2023, and anybody that knows Kafele knows I ain't changed. I ain't altered that message. Them kids need to see themselves in the learning, and if they don't see themselves in the learning, then the question is, what are we doing? Those of you who are on here right now, you only come on this platform because you see yourself in what we do every Saturday morning, and if this wasn't relevant, then you'll go and do something else. But because this is relevant for you, you come on here and watch or you watch the recordings later on, which is where the bulk of our viewers are watching the recordings because everybody can't be here live on Saturday at 1055. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that to say this, uh, Dr. Smith, Steve, I'm, I'm getting all excited, man. Bring it down. because Trey Lay, you, you got guests today. You just the host. Bring it down. Bring it down. My son over here looking at me. Bring it down. <laughs> all right, here we go. Hey, Doc, here, here, here's, here's where I am on this. Your dissertation, the effect of racial identity on self-concept. You must have had a ball doing that research. The, the, I had I a ball. You worked hard. I had, I had, well, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm excited about this question. Go ahead. <laughs> the effect of racial identity on, on self-concept. I want you to t explain to us what is the effect? of racial identity on self-concept, holla. And in a few words, does race affect who you are and what you feel and think about yourself, basically? Mm. And I'm gonna tell you, the reason why I chose that topic specifically is because my experience at Sojourner Truth Middle School and because of how we were teaching at that time. Mm -hmm. I saw the magic and how it worked. I knew how our students, if when they, knew who they were when they when they understood the history of the real history, the accurate history of who we were as people of African descent, how it propelled them in mm -hmm. believing 
that they can, they were geniuses. They weren't all the negative stereotypes that society was selling to them and we would be brought into in so many different industries. But when you understand that the reflection of others have a big impact on how you feel about yourself and you take all that negativity out and you put it in that school, so Journey Truth, that we were doing in the late 90s and we turned mm -hmm. the school around and we increased those test scores. Right. And it wasn't because of math best, best practices. It wasn't because of English best practices. It was because how I feel about myself or who I am of a person of African descent living in the United States of America, living, mm -hmm. quote unquote, in, in, in the most undesirable places in America. Yes, I am a jewel. I am a diamond in the rough. I was able to come to school each and every day. And you had people in that building who reminded me of who my real self is. So when you turn that self-concept into something positive you can live and do the unimaginable mm -hmm. and it's not really unimaginable it's what everybody else in society is doing but Except you know we had to combat all those things that we were plagued with for so long in this society and and you know what we were doing something so fantastic people weren't teaching from that way so i felt you know, if I'm going to invest in myself and get myself a PhD, I'm going to have to do it. And I have to do my research in something that I know firsthand could work. And I can model this for others if they wanted to do the same thing. Yeah, and I wow. became a scholar in it. You sure did. You sure did. Now, our topic, I'm a, I got an A and a B for you. Our topic, and I'm going to do this for the rest of this, pre this, this interview conversation. The topic is you're the principal. So what now what? So given everything you just said, said Dr. Smith Sneed, what would be the role of the principal? See, you you principal now somebody out there. So what? Now what is the topic? But see, y'all read it, but you ain't get the energy. Let me let me give you the right energy with the topic today. You're the principal. So what? Now what? That's mm -hmm. the energy that goes with the topic. So now with that. When, as you talked about that correlation between race and self-concept, talk to us about the role of the leadership. And you don't have to put yourself in it. You, you can be consulted. Okay. So uh, on you, you, on you. You, I, I feel like the role of these, the leadership, you are the leader of culture and climate. Ooh. You are the leader of culture and climate. And you do it so well. Um, use that PA system. When I talked mm -hmm. about social emotional learning earlier, and I, I took that as, as one of my topics, social emotional learning isn't just whatever the five attributes are, what they say they are. Those are just building relationships with everyone in the building, with your parents in the community. Right. When you have goals, when you have a vision for your school, everyone should know what it is and participate in that. Sick. That is so important. You need to convey and communicate in such a positive way and what you want your school to be and speak as if it is that way already. Yep. Like you said, you envision yourself being that person and being on stage and, and going to all these places and stuff. You can envision yourself, your, your school being the best school, having high academic achievement, turn around because that's something that you speak. You speak life each and every day. Death and life is in the power of time. We have mm. to use that to empower us, speak life. And I speak life into my students each and every day. I will say, do that to, for whatever principles are, assistant mm -hmm. principles, you you have, you're, you that that's nothing. I feel right. like that's, free. you know, you, you're not trying to entice people with, with different things. So I'm gonna give you a coupon to go to McDonald's. No, speaking life are the jewels of what we have. When right. you had those sidebar conversations with us as, um, teachers and and we were deciding on what what we wanted to do with this whole thing of education and things do you know how valuable those conversation was mm. because you used into our life because you spoke mm. those words of wisdom to us because you invested you invested a piece of who you are your spirit into us and you mm. are be a part of everything not just with your teachers but with your students with the whole um east orange playing field in north tech community Mm. And now you do it on a world stage. So um, <laughs> that's what you do as a leader. And leadership doesn't begin and end with the principalship. You empower and enable leaders in the classroom. 
Word. You're your first leader. You as, as a classroom teacher, you are the first leader they see. Yeah. And then it's just a continuation within the building. It's just coming from the top and trickling down in a good way. That's what you do. You you all that energy, all that energy, that positive energy. And you just you just have enough and you give it to the whole entire building by modeling it, by speaking yeah. it, by living it, by ingesting yeah. it. This Word. is who we are. And, and you just the good things of what you want to see and what you continue to see. And I, I always say those are freebies. When I get on the loudspeaker as an administrator in the past, whatever school level, K-8, high school, and things like that, and I go and do a five-minute walkthrough, and I talk about the great things I've seen. I always have something good to say yeah. about teaching and learning. Right. That's impactful. That's powerful stuff, too. That's powerful. I hope, I hope everybody's getting this down. Get it down. That positive energy, it, it matters. It matters. Some of the stuff we get, some of that, you know, I remember them days of principalship and some of the stuff that was coming from above. And I'm like, how, can, how am I going to use this? It's, this is just not useful for me. And I'm just speaking for me now, y'all. Um, uh, Principal Chase. Yes, sir. You are, you are, you're passionate about the implementation of culturally responsive pedagogy and practices. And, and as I said before, you 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 co-wrote that curriculum, Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization, using the textbook of the same title written by Dr. Tony Browder. Um, talk to us about the correlation between teaching this course and your passion for culturally responsive pedagogy and practices. You know, here is what I didn't Again, we didn't have these frameworks or methodologies to talk about, but there was, I couldn't see me. I never saw me. And when I say me, and I'm going to say specifically me as a black man, as a black boy, as a black male in any curriculum. And because I didn't see me and, you know, give thanks that you gave us the opportunity to then interject us. And the best of us, the fullness of us and yeah. our story and give it to our children, our students, our scholars. And as I progressed now as a leader, here is actually my, 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 my uh, dissertation is culturally responsive pedagogy. But really what I want to do is to create or what you did to us, do that for some teachers. So really teaching teachers how to teach black children mm. and teaching teachers how to teach black male children. Mm. And the first thing is we have to make sure we're seen. So the window and the mirror concept, right? Before that was even a thing, we didn't have any mirrors. So I need my teachers to understand that we need to see those children inside of the learning, inside of the building, physically their image, auditory, we need to hear young black men. We need them to experience who they are so that when they come to school, school is going to be a thing that's going to uplift and promote their being, right? Their identity and not something that they're going to fight against. It has to be something to add to who they are. So my whole mission, man, is to make sure that education is going to empower our community, and, and in, in particular, uh, our young black males. And the question is basically, do they see themselves? I ask my teachers a question. Um, <laughs> I always say this. I don't like when we say, when we give example and we use Johnny, because names and words, you said the power of the tongue, uh, Dr. Smith. Well, when you think of Johnny, there's an image that comes with Johnny, right? So, are you teaching math or are you teaching Malik? Or are you teaching science or are you teaching Sharice? You know, mm -hmm. so when we use those names and we give those examples, now we're talking about the students in front of us. Yeah. We're talking about the students in the community. So now we have a direct connection and we're talking about what they need, not what's scripted. And I tell my staff, <laughs> Well, let me not, let me, I'll just say this part. <laughs> We're going to give our students what they need. Yeah. Now, it might cause us to work a little harder because we got to give other 
constituents what they want because that's a part of the job. But we got to give our students what they need. Yeah. And we got to make sure we see them. Right. And mm -hmm. as we see them, we speak to them. And 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 as you just so uh, eloquently spoke, then we speak life into them. Mm -hmm. um, and the last part I'll say is, yeah, that, 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 that intercom, because one of the things, again, I learned from you is even as an administrator, we're still teachers. Yeah. So the part that I get to teach every day is in my five minute uh, morning convocation and announcements. I get to teach. There you go. Yeah. Good speech. Good stuff. You know, I, I got away from Johnny a long time ago as a speaker. And I started using, and and and, and we, we're talking over a decade ago, I, I use Jalil and Jamila. These are mm -hmm. two imaginary youngsters in, in my mind. They're, they're not anybody I've seen, but I use them as valedictorian all the way to at promise, which some would say at risk, and everything in between. But anytime, I, I don't even say, for example, a child, or I just say J J Jalil. Mm -hmm. Right. And they under, I'll explain what I'm doing. And then now from for the rest of the day, because it could be a full day workshop when they hear Jalil Jamila, they know I'm talking about a child. Mm -hmm. Now, their school could be diverse, but I'm still talking Jalil and Jamila. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, and that's that's the, that's because the, I because because I got to stay centered, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I, and I want to use that as a as a teaching tool to keep them centered and not using this generic Johnny all the time that we always do. Right. right. Good stuff. So 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 going back to the topic, then, uh, Principal Chase, you're the principal. So what now? What in terms of the audience? So with given everything you just said, here you are, you, 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 you're in a circle with, let's say, seven, eight principals. What are you going to tell them in terms of their role relative to that correlation? You know, the first thing I'm going to say is. When you when you when you when you identify your staff, who are the believers? Mm. Where are the believers? Because you're 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 the building principle, but to, to use an analogy, we're the coach. We're on the sideline. The teachers are in the classroom, they're the players. So they're gonna execute the game plan that you come up with. So you gotta find some folks who are going to believe in it. Everyone is not going to believe at the beginning, just because you walk in and you lay your titles in. So going back to what Dr. Smith Snee said, building relationships is important because from the, your believers and then you empower those believers. So you need teacher leaders, scholar leaders, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. are going to be able to carry out and implement what you are envisioning again inside the classroom. And then you have to have um, be support. You have to make sure your support. And as an administrator, I didn't know this that you were doing, but you got to be willing to take the slings and arrows from the different, you know. Oh yeah. So that your teachers can be buffered. You got to serve as a buffer now. Yeah. Because you need them to do certain things. And you need them to implement and carry out the vision. Um, you're not going against, but you definitely have a vision, and you're going to receive all kinds of things coming from, uh, you know, high up. So you got to be that imp that that buffer. You know, it's it's interesting you use that word too. That I I, I could probably do a whole book on just the buffering <laughs> that right. I did over the years mm -hmm. that staff would have never known about. The, the, I've only shared one thing that I buffered because because there was so much panic going on. This is when I was in Essex County. Um, so I shared with them. I said, look, I'm, I'm going I'm going to put a stop to this. And I did. But, um, you know, some directive. But um, a lot of the other stuff, they had no idea. You know, that's just things that we as principals, when we're looking out for, for staff that, that we do, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're fighting for them. We're advocating for them right. because we know what they need in order for them to be at their strongest in the classroom. I love it. I love it. Doc, Dr. Smith Sneed, you are, um, you're, you're a staunch advocate and I know I've been dealing a lot of, a lot of history so far, but I'm a, I'm a transition out of it. But right now you're a, sta a staunch advocate for teaching truth and accuracy in teaching history, which, which once again was, was my whole motivation for the program, the Institute uh, um, at truth. So my question to you is simple. 
will we ever get you? I want you to think about America now. So take it out of mm-hmm. Jersey. Or mm-hm. wait, will, wait. We ever, will we ever get there given the politics of the nation right now? And, and what are the reasons for whatever your sp- response will be? Um, well, in backwards designs, the, the response is because I taught the truth. You know, I, I know I know the result of when you teach children the truth, what the results will be. And it, it's just going to impact them in a great way. You know, I can speak from, um, you know, uh, African-American perspective, teaching African-American kids kids and and how they responded so positively to the truth Mm -hmm. you know we didn't um sugar coat candy coat i remember um after my first year teaching african-american history and um i love that you had it as an elective course so not only did i teach them social studies first period i also taught them african-american history second period so that was just like whoa i have 80 minutes and i'm you know i'm I'm gonna rock this out we we we're gonna become somebody at the end so i don't even know if you remember i had a name change in ceremony at the end of that first semester yeah and um we we all had we we gave ourselves name based on who we evolved into as people of african descent and I still get um, Facebook um, DMs and all that stuff. Do you remember when we did that and all that other stuff? Because you know what? Um, one of your things you used to say on the last week every morning is not what you call me, it's what you answer. Yeah, we answered to a Sante Sada to Tavanada Hotep, right? And I said, what are you answering to? And, and I, I, I took that and I ran with it in a classroom because, you know, I always wanted to connect to what was going on in the building. And that's why, um, you know, we, we and, and not only did we have the name changing, but how we got there, we sat in groups and, and um, you know, we had to have kids to agree with this is who your character is now. It just couldn't be something that you made up. You know, we, we had to, we had to see these attributes in you. And I, and, um, <laughs> and so when they, they, they named themselves that, and I also named myself a name. And so we all participated in this together. You know, I wanted to go so far as um, you know, getting due citizenship from Ghana, if you remember, right? I do. I do. <laughs> and it was like, okay, like you got to slow down now. You know, I, I was dreaming big thoughts because I, I wanted them to understand to make that connection to to who we really are. And you know, and this is before all DNA tests came out and all that other stuff. But um, I, that's why I'm a staunch advocate, right? <laughs> right. Stolen is putting in yeah, my 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 African um appellation is Makeda. That's I know right. the same and um, I, I even start calling myself that. So, and I start doing speaking engagements, and they they called me Makeda Adiola Sankofa, and it, and it does something to my spirit every time I'm called that because it, it it calls on the attributes of who I am spiritually and who I am as an educator, as a teacher, as as a, as a mother, you know, as a nurturer in in mm-hmm. our community. So, um, you know, I wanted the the students to feel that. That's why I'm a staunch advocate for that. And, and when we speak nationally, from a national perspective, and what's going on and how our school boards are being hijacked for those people who want to continue to marginalize and oppress our voice, it Come is so now. important for us as educators to get on those school, school boards. You Man. know, um, a lot of people in, that's in my group and see me, I did run for school board in my town. You know, mm. I... I I, I've been I haven't been living here for a long time. I lived here before I moved away and I came back. But um I, I did great. If I, I'm I may or may not run again, I haven't decided. But when you have different groups, you know, I don't even want to say the groups who they are, but they're mm-hmm. they're not for everybody, they're for themselves. Mm-hmm. They're not mm-hmm. for fair and accurate history. And mm-hmm. they understand the power of history. Mm-hmm. If if they didn't understand how powerful history is in America, they wouldn't. Mm-hmm be so intent yeah. and so intentional on trying to subdue accurate history. Right? So you, you have to think about that. Right. You know, when, when you when you go to states like Florida and Arkansas and Tennessee and, and um all those places that say, you know what, we we you know what if, if my kids feel bad about what I did, right. that I'm not going to teach the right history. I'm I'm going to have a revisionist history. I'm going to continue to lie to you. You know, but this is this is not new. This is the same thing from their playbook from, you know, the Daughters of Confederates, so forth and so on. So we as responsible educators, if you live in a town, I don't care what the demographics are, run for your school board. Mm-hmm. We have to save ourselves and we have to play within their politics. 
If we choose to live in these communities, if we choose to live in, in communities that are not the majority of us, go out and do it. Try. I, I say that. Let your voice be home. Go to those school board meetings. We have to do that, not only for ourselves, but for our neighbors, for everyone. I say the same for myself. I, I, I want to be on the Jersey City School Board, but my schedule is so crazy. So whenever I slow down, whenever that is, then that's uh that's on the buck that's in the buck on, on the bucket list to um run for school board here in Jersey City. Um Chase, let me uh Principal Chase, let me go to you on the same question because when I put this question together, I said I know Principal Chase is gonna want to jump on this well as yes, well. So let me give you the same question. Um you two are a staunch advocate for truth and accuracy in history. So the question is the same question. Will we will we ever get there? And and what are the reasons for whatever your response may be? The reason why we're going to get there is because we have an indomitable spirit. And if history has showed us something is that we can't be stopped. And the only people who actually stop us is ourselves. Those folks and their shenanigans is, is interesting. Um, they're actually just distractions. They're, they're, they're truly distractions. I want us as a people nationally to really begin to look within and focus and be who we are because we are not small. We are not limited. We are very much capable and we've demonstrated that. We've done enormous things with little coming out of enslavement, as well as mm -hmm. we had resources and we were, uh, 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 I love the way, I learned it from Dr. Akur, Dr. Chika. Mm -hmm. We were once, uh, we led the nation in wealth creation, literary, I can't remember how he said it. He, he knows it though, but we were those things. So um, it's, not, it's not in us to be failures. Everywhere we've gone, we've we've demonstrated success against the odds. So this is nothing but a small uh, hiccup that they continue to put in our in our face and in our uh, space. So I agree with you, uh, you know, Doctor Smith Snead, getting into the school boards, and that's something that you just laid down a charge that I'm going to look to uh, mm -hmm. once I get a little bit clearer schedule to do as well. Um, you know. Jay-Z said it this way, difficult is nothing, impossible takes a week. And that's the story of African people. Difficulty is nothing, impossible takes a week. So once we have a, 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 a true firm belief in who we are, then we'll do it. And if I may touch on what my sister talked about with the name, um, you know, and being so inspired, my spiritual practice now is comedic. Um, mm -hmm. And as a Kemite, my uh, spiritual name is Majuti Ra in my aunt, spokesman for the cosmic consciousness of the universe. You asked me how many names I got. I got a few. Yeah. And I left all of them because it speaks to my evolution as a as as a man, as a brother, as a um, spiritual aspirant, as an educator. So um, and then one last piece. I write my teachers every week. We do, I send out, I call the principal's bulletin. My commentary, it includes uh, certain things. I highlight a teacher in a comment called, I appreciate you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I open it with these three words, hotel, peace, and greetings. Mm. I close it with four thank yous. One from you, Asante Sana. Then I use uh, gracias for our Spanish speakers. Messi for our Creole speakers, and then thank you. So making sure that's in there. I don't even explain it. I just put it in there. Put it in there. Make sure you capture everybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let me let me let me stay with the two of you on um on that question, and I want you to think about again the topic. You're the principal. So what? Now what? I'll keep it the same way I did in the previous question. You you're in a circle with about eight principals. And um, you're having a conversation. What do you what do you tell them about ensuring that representation is there? 
uh, for each of the youth that are in that classroom, but but not just for them, but for the youngsters who are not. So 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 if I'm talking about African Americans, for those youngsters who are not African American, so that they too receive truth and accuracy in history. What what might you say in that direct conversation to that person? Circles in that in that um in that circle. That's your daughter practicing that clarinet. Yes. Oh, that's on your side. I thought that was um Dr. Smith Snee's side. That's no, my, my kids are out of the house. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what, okay. So you got a lot going on there. All right, so that, that question to you first, Doc. That's my son. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so um the question is like, what do I say to principals when they want to have um representation for everybody, even non-blacks? And this is something that I talk about to my teachers all the time. First of all, I was in a great position um when I when I was um you know, directed to establish this school. So I got to choose my own staff. And a lot of my staff members were um, intentionally pulled because of the relationships I built as my tenure as an administrator in Plainfield for the last 15 years. So I had people who left, um, you know, jobs like um, data specialists and um, other things that they weren't even directly um, teaching kids anymore. They were doing things behind the scene or whatever. And because of the relationships with I built, because of my leadership um, throughout the years in a high school or, you know, my K-8 school or my elementary schools where I was, they chose to come with me. Mm. So I specifically mm. picked teachers who were going to empower students. Mm -hmm. You know, I have I have a great ESL bilingual um, social studies teacher who's actually my teacher of the year this year, who was on fire, who teach fair and accurate hi history. I have um, a mainstream social studies teacher who's on fire, who teach fair and accurate history. You know, even in our English class, we, we do a lot of things that um, speaks to um, cultural relevant, relevant pedagogy, as um, you know, Principal Chase was saying, it's, it's so mm -hmm. important so many yeah. things we bring in speakers twice a month we go on field trips once a month where i ensure that um everybody is is getting a sprinkle of mm -hmm. who they are and what they need you know not just as a, um, a student but as a student of of you know latin latino hispanic descent african-american descent caribbean descent and, and we we have um, talk sessions once a week with myself or one of the teachers and we talk about our differences and we talk about basically how we are really related in such ways. It's just not differences, but how we're bringing that together. We're in the same boat. We're in the United States of America. <laughs> and I, I always bring that point to them. I was like, you, you know what? It's important that you know who you are and know how this world views you, but how your view doesn't mean this is how far you're going in life. So, um, I, I love the fact that I was able to do that. So basically everybody that's on my staff was handpicked, were, um, were tenured teachers um, who were doing this for a long time and, and know what the expectation and the standards are. And that's why they chose to come with me. I love it. So yeah. what I would say to other principals is you, you have to, again, reiterate building relationships, talking to people, understanding at the end of the day, what the goals are. And if you're able as a teacher who, who want to work within that dynamic, and if you are, and you have a lot of people who, who will and don't, but you have some naysayers and they have to get on board. They have to get on board because this is the program. The results are there. The results are apparent. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> same, same thing, Principal Chase. So, you know, equity is the, Thing that comes up with this mm -hmm. and I, I talk about equity from the standpoint of the image of the three different people trying to watch a ball game one is extremely tall um one is a little bit shorter and one is not short mm -hmm. and you want to give everyone the same you give them all a box to stand on well the short one still doesn't see themselves so you need to frame your resources based on need, not making sure everyone has the same amount, but who needs the most, get the most. And who needs a little bit, get a little bit. And who don't need any, you still they still get something because they're present. So in, in, in saying that, I make sure, you know, one of the things that folks may not know, and, and, and I, I picked up my flag, right? This, is it is it uh backwards? I don't know. Yeah, but mm -hmm. we can see it. Diana. Yes. 
So I'm Guyanese. And uh, I speak that because within our diaspora, we have a lot of diversity. And so we want to make sure those students, we know who, and we don't just assume who is uh, big up, sister. We, we don't, we don't um, assume everything, but we have to learn our community. We have to learn the dynamics of the school and, again, speak to the needs of our schools and our students. And so um, it's about being equitable and then meeting the needs. Those who need the most, they get the most. And, and we can't feel bad or feel um, like we're doing a disservice for that. And, and I'll say it this way, because <laughs> uh, I'm a football fan. We don't talk about the quarterbacks who are going to be or the coaches who are going to be in the Super Bowl. We only mention the black one. Right. So it's already understood that the 45th or the 52nd quarterback that's been there already, they're already understood to be. No. So we got to make sure we highlight and we give what's needed to who need it most. Mm -hmm. Hope that answers the question. I love it. That's 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 a great conversation, too. Yeah. Let's all let's 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 transition. Dr. Smith Sneed, um, you happen to be passionate about the topic of black women in leadership. Um, I would dare say, without having done a formal survey, the largest demographic of this platform, the AP and New Principles Academy, is black women, right? There's, there's no, because, because of the opportunity to meet so many people on the road in the same venues, and, and, and it's predominantly black women that come up and tell me that they're part of the family, then, it, then it, I think it gives me a large enough sample size that that's who we are. So that happens to be one of your, your, your areas of passion. So my question to you, because there's some young leaders on here, there's a lot of, matter of fact, when I said that demographic and, and a lot of them are very young, right? Cause I, I meet them. So they haven't experienced quite yet what the two of you have experienced in leadership in terms of longevity years. So my question to you, therefore, uh, what, are, what are some of the challenges uh, for black women in leadership and how might they overcome whatever challenges you want to give us? First of all, I, I just want to say to all the females that transition into leadership is, is always going to be a challenge, you know, because we, we still look at, um, you know, people in leadership positions from a, a mindset and perspective of you know, like men can lead better for whatever reason. You know, I, I just want you to, to understand that we, we, this, this whole world, the society is all from a masculine perspective is, is, and it is also misogynistic. You know, we, we tend to think that, um, because you're a black man and stuff, you on a secondary level, you'll be better in a high school. So I was happy to hear, um, principal chase that you're in, a, um, <laughs> a very preschool, you know, I, I love that. You know what I mean? Because you don't see that. He, even my husband, when he first started teaching, he was a first grade, second grade teacher, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so we need that so much. But everybody has this vision that um, male should be in secondary and um, women should be in elementary. And then you have all these females, right? Um, the the vocation of an educator is predominantly female and they, they, their communication with you as a woman is very different with your, their communication with you as a male leader. So mm -hmm. we have to get past all that. We have to get past that. I, I've been on both sides of the coin, you know, um, they, they seem to, have to be reassured because um, the, the leader is a male than a female. But um, uh, there's a lot of statistics that stay otherwise. Um, first of all, two two thirds of um, black principals on the secondary level who are female are, you know, they're 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 smashing their goals. Their mm -hmm. their 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 um schools are very productive. They're academically efficient. They have great um sustainability with teachers. They have built such a culture and climate that is wonderful and that's a great um, environment for students and teachers to be in. You know, we have to get past of the stereotypes, of the misnomers, of all those things. I think that you come in there, you come in there articulate, you come in there strong, you come in there self-competent, capable, all those things, and you'll win people over. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do. 
but we have to go the extra mile to do so. Whereas as a man, they go in there and they automatically want to partner with them and give them their support just because he's a man. Hmm. And it's, it's a lot of things. It comes from culture. It comes from the church. It comes from whatever religious organization that you subscribe to. All those things we are fighting as female administrators. And then on top of being a female, when you're black, you come with those stereotypes of all that and all that and all that. No, no, let's get past that. Help each other. We yeah, And I, I hate when people say all those negative things. Oh, when you have all those women, we can't go on board. We argue, we do this. No, we're emotional. Everybody's emotional. If you're not emotional in education, then you're not doing your job. Because your emotion should be passion. Your emotion should be fervor. Your emotion should be high energy just because mm. you want to get to the next level with these with these kids. And you just have such a, a commitment to the community, regardless of who you are. And we deal with all those stereotypes. But at the same time, we're resilient. We have great fortitude. We get past it. And we're smashing our goals. Right. I love going into female um, principal schools. I see what they're doing. I understand all the hard work that they're putting in. I understand all the stuff they have to deal with from central office. And we're not promoted at the same rate as men principals are. We're not promoted. You can look mm -hmm. at a female. She's a great assistant principal for years and years, five to seven years with, with, with long experience, um, qualifications, all that stuff. And then she's not the first one that they choose to promote, especially on a secondary level. We have to get out of that. And I'm going to proudly say that I'm in a district where on a secondary level, you have a female principal at the flagship high school. You have myself as a female principal as the alternative high school. You have two middle schools and you have female principals. And I love that. I love that because they are... <laughs> Um, overcoming what the norms are and what the stereotypes are. Because when we speak diversity, we're just not talking about diversity in um, race. We're talking about diversity in gender. And our, mm -hmm. our, our, our district is definitely, um, you know, meeting those goals of diversity in gender. I love it. You know, I, yeah. I, I, got, a, I got a part two for you. The and, and this this goes back to me just knowing this audience and I, I I know who's out there. So there's somebody out there watching right now, either live or we'll see the video later. And they're 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 the first African American woman principal in the history of the school. The school used to have a white pop a white student population and an obvious teaching population that was white, but that demographic has shifted. And now that student population, that student demographic is black and brown. Mm -hmm. But the teaching staff have remained the same. It's a challenging position for this woman who is the first in the history of the school and a staff who has not adapted to the shifting student demographic. And now my leader is black and female. I want you. I, I know that woman is going to see this video either live. I don't have someone in mind. It's just that I know who I know who watches this. I know she mm -hmm. will see this either either on right now, or we'll see it late, later. With that being one of your passions, what advice do you have for this woman in my mind to be effective under those which could, which could be very challenging circumstances? I will spend every waking moment with you know, our um, meet staff meetings, professional development to, to, to shift that paradigm on who you're teaching and why you're teaching. At the end of the day, we're teaching students, but we know every student and every population come with their unique set of concerns that we all have to address. And as, and as you say, it's just not, it's not just about race, it's about technology, is about behaviors, mm -hmm. is about all mm -hmm. those things. So um, you have to address all that. You have to address the social emotional issues that's going on in your building. And as a teacher, you have to address the social emotional issues that's going on with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, what what is what are the some some of those things that you feel as though that's not moving you forward because you're thinking is stuck in 10 years ago. 
you know, what, what challenges as a teacher do you have? And you have to be real with yourself and answer those questions. And um, I, I think as a leader, maybe that's what she need to pull on, you know, pull on your teaching staff, um, give them professional development, um, try to change that mind. It's not going to happen overnight. It will happen throughout time because if they care about student achievement, if you care about your student, you have to care about the whole student. Because at the end of the day, it's not about race, it's not about gender, it's not about orientation, it's not any of those things. I see these as, um, you know, innocent students, innocent children who are going to go out in the world. And if we don't prepare them the best of our ability, they, they're going to be eaten up by this world. You're not mm -hmm. going to get those 10-year um, um, callbacks and say, you know what, I'm so happy you did this and that for me. You're going to get those 10-year callbacks or someone, somebody somebody's scout to say, you know what, I wasn't prepared adequately enough for life because you didn't care enough about me. You didn't care mm -hmm. about my whole person. You know, you have to, as a principal, talk about those things. You know, hiring somebody like you to come in and deal with those staff and, 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 and do those PDs. Understanding that the world is becoming more and more um, non-white. We live in a non-white society and it's becoming mm -hmm. that, not only in urban areas, in suburbs and every place else. And you have to prepare yourself for it. And I think as a district, you know, coming all the way from the head, that has to be something on the radar that they address as well. It just can't be the principal of the school, but you have to get all the backing from the district as well. Solid advice. Hey, mm -hmm. somebody out there that that may be applicable to you, you heard it. You may need to rewind and listen to it again. Solid advice. You know, I want to highlight Shanavia. Um, I, I I know I had her, but I don't know if the two of you, the two of you have Shanavia Davis over here. Yes, we do. Way back. I see. Yeah, happy birthday to you. She's a teacher now. Happy birthday. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday people, to you. That's right. For those of you that don't re realize what, what's happened, this is one of our former students <laughs> from way <laughs> back. I had her in high school. And uh, happy birthday. And she's a teacher now, by the way, y'all. So happy birthday, Shanavia. Until big brother, I said, what's up? Right. Let's um, let's go. Uh, Principal Chase. Um, and by, by the way, to the audience, we winding down. We getting there. We getting there. We getting there. Um, Principal Chase, to quote you, you said, um, I've always been passionate about the educational attainment for black male students and have sought to disrupt the cradle to prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. You know, people think about the school to prison pipeline and you, you took it back further, the cradle to prison pipeline by being intentional about the types of programming and resources that I bring into a school. My question to you two part are what types of programming and resources are a requirement toward disrupting the cradle to prison pipeline? Wow. Um, you know, programming, first and foremost, and, and, and when we talk about black boys in particular, and it really don't matter their age, you know, from three and four year olds all the way up to 18 year olds, black boys aren't seen as beautiful, human, um, and I, I'm not going to say fragile, but having emotions, you know, mm -hmm. I experienced this. We can only express three emotions, being mad, sad, or glad, you know, mm -hmm. not having a full array of emotions and being expressed and being understood. Black boys are so misunderstood um, for who they are trying to be and establish in the world. So programming, first and foremost, is to see their humanity. Um, so I might, well, I've, I've done everywhere I've gone, um, rites of passage and mentoring programs. Um, this brings me to, uh, the t-shirt or the sweatshirt I'm wearing now step striving together equals progress is an awesome, awesome, awesome organization in the city of Newark. It's a black male mentoring rites of passage program. Um, my son was a part of it. Um, I worked there as a mentor and it's still been going on. Um, and in fact, they're working to build a building using their own uh, resources, but teaching the fullness of our humanity. That's the first part. I need um, all staff, teachers, custodians, um, security, 
you know, especially security, because they're the mm -hmm. first individuals mm -hmm. who are going to encounter our students to have mm -hmm. a relationship with our black males that's not adversarial, that's not confrontational, and that's not based off of what we see. And even though some of our boys might walk into the schools presenting a specific image or presenting a specific posture, that's self-defense. That's not who they are. And we got to be able to look beyond that and reach the soul. And so certain programmers bringing in speakers, um, um, you know, various community activists and leaders who would garner the respect of some of these young men. I've had, um, well, well, we'll say street organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, the world will call them gangs. We'll call them street organizations, various leadership who understand who they are and, 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 and bring a certain element into the school positively. Uh, because within those young men, you can find leaders. You find brilliance. They might be engaged mm -hmm. in the street. I remember mm -hmm. one young man, um, we would we called them, and let me give credit to uh, Mayor Raz Baraka, who is the mayor of Newark, but he was a high school principal and he did a lot of innovative programs. My good brother Bashir, Muhammad Akinyele, Pata Akinyele over at Week Wake High School, they started this. So I only brought this where I went. And we would have uh, community organizations and street organizations meet with the students who represented those different factions. And within those meetings, without police, so we needed to have a safe space for some trusted staff members, we would have discussions of how we were going to keep our school safe and our school was going to be safe space. And we weren't going to have uh, any disruption to the schools and young men bought into that because we didn't try to take who they were outside away from them. We allowed them to be that, but just said in here, we're all representing this one thing and then show them love, um, making sure they understand that they're loved, they're valued, they're respected. They're going to be checked. They're going to be disciplined, but they're going to be loved at the same time. So all of my programming focused on uplifting. Um, when I talk about our young black men, uplifting them, um, embracing them, um, guiding them, loving them, supporting them, understanding them, and then giving them the jewels for them to become self-sufficient and successful after school. So we're talking about career, um, talking about uh, not only college, but exposure to their talents and their abilities. I remember this, and I'll end with this, the two most important dates in a person's life, the day they're born and the day they find out why. Mm -hmm. And I've always strived to give purpose, you know, Nia, to, 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 to our young black males. Now I'm doing it on a, they're, they're very young, so we start real young with these babies but giving them just an understanding and making sure they're not misunderstood in what they present um, in terms of behavior. Principal Chase, I'm, um, I'm a principal that's listening to you right now and I, I have access to you. So I'm on the platform. I'm just here as part of the fam, but I'm, I'm listening to what Principal Chase just said about the young men. And I, 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 I want to talk to you. So now I got you. So let me be him. Principal Chase, I'm a principal of a school and I've got a lot of black boys, but I've got diversity in the school, racial diversity. And but my black boys, my suspension data says that it's my black boys that are being the ones who are being suspended or the ones who are being disciplined. My achievement data says that my black boys are the ones who are achieving the lowest uh, in my school. Uh, this is my re this, I'm some principal somewhere in America. This is my reality. And I'm mm -hmm. and I'm sharing it with you. Uh, Principal Chase, help me. What, what are what are? I know you can't do the workshop for me right now, but just what are some steps I can take so that I can I, I can eliminate this discipline problem with my black boys and I can begin to raise the achievement levels. Uh, I see what you got in your hand of uh, 
of my black boys. <laughs> I see it. You know, <laughs> because one of the things that I, I've learned as an administrator, as an educator, as an educational leader, um, people respect data and they mm -hmm. respect um, when you have empirical numbers and things that can back up what you say. So the first thing I'm going to say to those principles is read this book. <laughs> and then not only read this book, get this book for your staff and have right. your staff read it. And then begin to use this book as a foundation to target and intentionally reverse those statistics with regards to your black male students. And here is what your staff need to shift. They need to shift their perception of your boys. And we need to come out of what you call, I, I will say, if it's zero tolerance policies you're practicing, that needs to end. So I would also add to that, um, Dr. Smith Snead was talking about social, emotional um, learning. So now we need to involve your counselors. And where are your counselors and their understanding of the black males? What do you know about the community that they're coming from? Mm -hmm. So if you haven't walked the streets, then walk the streets. Do you know the, 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 the neighborhoods? Have you, do you know the, the, the local leaders within that neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Get to know them, talk to them. In fact, get to understand what maybe your most challenging students' behavior and actions are like outside of the school. Because mm -hmm. I would venture to say that young man might be demonstrating both his brilliance, his leadership, his responsibility outside of school. But inside of school, there might be something that's not connecting. And now we got to have a conversation with um, your curriculum specialists and the supervisors. What's inside of the curriculum? Are, is he seeing himself in everything that you see? Because if he's not seeing himself, he's going to tune out and disassociate. And what I mean when I'm saying seeing himself is what is the subject matter talking about? Going back to, we talked about Johnny. Is anything about him in what he is learning? Because if he's absent from what he's learning or if everything that he's learning about is something negative, well, he's going to say, this is not a space for me and therefore I'm not going to do anything. So there's a lot of background work that has to be done. And if you're mm -hmm. willing to do that, then you can begin to shift those numbers. And I guarantee you, those young men will soar. And then uh, 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 lastly, which would undergird that is teaching them who they are. So we call mm -hmm. that simply a knowledge of self. Mm -hmm. So giving them a knowledge and understanding of who they are and who they have been historically, culturally, politically, socially, uh, what images are around the school. If they don't see themselves, and I'm talking about seeing the, uh, Kefeli, you had, everything in, 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 in our building, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about that now. And with my teachers, I'm talking about the books. We're talking about preschool. What are the books that they're reading? Are they mm -hmm. seeing books about themselves? Are they reading books about themselves? Are they exposed to images about themselves? So if you do all of those things, and it's not all going to be done one uh, at the same time, just pick one and focus on it and then begin to build and build with the long range plan of shifting our black men from being or black boys into being uh, your school leaders and the brilliant scholars that they are. And they will, they will shine, they will rise. And, and Constance, Con, that's, that's, that's great. Constance Sherrod just wants to know what book you just had up. So that's, that's uh, Constance, that's a book I wrote called Motivating Black Males to Achieve in School and in Life. Uh, and you can get a copy. <laughs> go to right, go right to Amazon and get yourself a copy. <laughs> I tried to write a little something for everybody, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, to the folks out there, we got two, we got one more question each. So we, we're getting there, we're getting there. Dr. Smith Snead, 
You're an alternative mm -hmm. school principal of a school that you led a team in establishing. You have an interest in alternative education. But you've also, as I, as I was reading, you know, some of your talking points, you talk about the uh, matter of fact, let me let me say this first. There are people on the call or there are people who will watch us later. And you have students who were in your school at some point who are now in an alternative setting. Right. Mm -hmm. That may be the right setting for them. It may not be. It may have been a whole misidentification, mislabeling. It may mm -hmm. not have been. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a case by case situation. But the bottom line is many of us have students who were once with us who are now in the alternative setting. You have this interest in you talk about the evolution of alternative schools. Um, speak to us, if you will, about how far or that might be too much to ask in a short period of time. But speak to us about the evolution of alternative schools and, and whatever evolution is still required through the lens of Dr. Uh, Detria Smith's knee. I mean, like um, when people traditionally think of what an alternative school is, the first thing that comes to their mind, regardless if you're in education, out of education, from a student's perspective, whomever, oh, those are the bad kids. Mm -hmm. Those are the kids that nobody wants. Those are the kids that disrupt school and all that other stuff. In some cases, that may be true. But now, what alternative school is and, and what it has evolved to be, this is a school where you, you have so many different elements, right, in, in students' education now. You know, and, and if you're in a district where you, you may have a transient population, you may um, be in a district, you know, where you have um, kids who are port of entry, um, um, kids who are at a cohort who, 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 for whatever reason, didn't graduate when they supposed to graduate or not on track to graduate within cohort. You know, we have strict rules here in the state of New Jersey that you have to graduate within your um, four year um, period. And if not, it's going to count against your graduation rate, so forth and so on. So now this this new evolution of alternative school that um, that is established in, in the district that I'm working in. Um, it, it, it really addresses all those needs. It, it's not particularly um, focused on kids who just can't make it in a mainstream high school because of behaviors. We have to think about um, because you don't fit in or whatever your mindset is, your behaviors are the way they are. But if you get into a smaller setting, mm -hmm. a, a, a small teacher um, student um, ratio, um, those behaviors might dissolve immediately. You have a lot of students who are disaffected, who just feel as though they don't fit in. You may have students who feel as though because of their sexual orientation, they don't they don't want to be on the spotlight of, for, for whatever reason, and they want to be in a, in a small environment. You have students who came to this country at 16, started as a freshman, and want to graduate because of whatever responsibilities they have for themselves and for their families that they need mm -hmm. to graduate within two years and two and a half years. And guess what? we're able to accommodate all those needs. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean about the evolution of what an alternative school is. So it's, it's not the traditional part because you know we, we maximize learning capacity in a hybrid model, online education, tradition, mm -hmm. traditional um, um, you know, teacher learning experience, um, option to independent study. Mm -hmm. So we're using all those things to ensure that one, that you graduate from school and two, as best we can, you graduate within cohort. So we address mm -hmm. so many different needs. So it, it isn't the traditional alternative school. Those are the throwaway kids. Those are the kids that people don't care about and everything like that. And a lot of times students put themselves there because they just yeah. feel more comfortable in that environment. And we nurture the students so much. I have yeah. a fabulous um, school social worker, um, you know, that is bilingual. And um, she addressed the needs, again, um, cultural relevance, you know, um, who's able to understand them, speak to them, make them feel comfortable in that setting. You know, I have a great um, school um, counselor, professional school counselor, who put that um, um, individual program plan. They have an individualized program to ensure that nice. they get out. They follow this They follow this um, instructional process. You can get out when you're supposed to get out. And a lot mm -hmm. of times it's a hard work. You have a lot to do as far as catching up. But if you just take it one day at a time, we accommodate you. If, if you're feeling as though you can't deal with it, we have rooms for that. We have a process in place for everything imaginable. You know, we mm -hmm. want you to get that day. I say every day on announcements, listen, 
as soon as I saw your face walk through that door, you won. Now, mm -hmm. how much you win is up to you. You know, this is, we win here. That's all we do is win. You win as soon as right. you walk through that door. Now, how mm -hmm. much you decide you're going to win for today is up to you. Because right. I tell them I win every day. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that's what they need. They get that. They get that nurturing. They, 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 we have guest speakers to come in and dress all their new needs. You know, we talk about not only alternative schools, I know pathways, different pathways for seniors. Everybody isn't going to a four-year college. Everybody can't afford to go to a four-year college. Um, people right. have different um, interests that they want as far as um, post-graduation. So uh, we, we zero in on that. You know, we have... Mm -hmm. um, a program in our school called um, Jobs for American Graduates. We have 60 students in there who are a part of that, who's learning how to navigate through the world of, um, you know, the workforce and present themselves in interviews. Um, we have internships and apprenticeships that are happening. We bring in um, the air, you know, the um, Air Force, Army Marines, all those different mm -hmm. branches of, mm -hmm. you know, of the Army, all those things that we we basically um, ex allow them to experience in our school because mm -hmm. we want them to maximize whatever options they have and don't feel as though that there's nothing for them. By the time mm -hmm. you leave that school, you want some type of pathway. Mm -hmm. We welcome you to the school. There's no way, and whatever happened in the past is in the past. Once you get to that school, you're a new student. We have student mm -hmm. ambassadors. We have the speakers who, who represent the school at graduation. They, mm -hmm. they love it. Because this is the first time in their life that one, they are affirmed. Principal Chase, when you said that you have to affirm those students each and every day, right. understand who they are, address their needs, and speak to who they are, and That's just right. prepare the goodness in them and not remind them of their past, but understand that the path that they are on and the road that they are traveling is the road to success and to lead them to whatever they want in life. And I say, you still want to be a doctor? If that's what your dream is, you still have the opportunity to be a doctor. If you still, right. if you want to be an aviation mechanic, some of them do, you can do that. Whatever you choose to do, you, you have all the potential and you, you're in the right place to achieve whatever goals that you want. That's something else. Um, you, you, yeah, you, gave, so you, gave, you gave us a lot there. Talk to us. This is on a personal level now. Talk to us about your sense of fulfillment relative to you being a leader in that setting. Because I, I doubt five years ago, you know, I could be wrong. You can correct me. I doubt five years ago you were you, you saw yourself as an alternative school principal. And then unless you had started the planning process back then. But before it was introduced to you to get there, I don't know that that was on your radar. It could have been. And you can address that. But let us know about the fulfillment that comes out of being in that setting as a leader. No, five years ago, I didn't want to have anything to do with alternative okay. schools. <laughs> <laughs> keeping it real. Yeah, keeping yeah it so, real. you know, yeah. that's the only thing I know how to do is be myself and keep it real. Right. You know, um, you know, I, I was the site administrator for alternative in, um, in the same district before, and it was a whole totally different program. So now when I was given an opportunity to, to run it in, in the leeway, the autonomy, to run yes. it how I, I want to run it and have the support of the superintendent, of the deputy superintendent and, and, and all the, the other assistant superintendents that, that help make that district go round and round. I have that support. You know, before I didn't have that support, I was told what to do. I, I was basically, you know, like, you know, being pulled a string. I had to work with what I have. But now since I have all the resources, the funding, everything like that, it, it's, it's, it's great. And what makes me go round is last year, when we had our first graduation and, and those kids were so disaffected, those kids were so dis disaffected when they stepped into that school in September, mm -hmm. because at that point they really didn't have a choice. You know, um, it was, it was done, you know, expeditiously mm -hmm. as far as opening up the school and things like that. I'm, I'm, I'll say it like that. So, um, you know, those kids was put there and, and, and they would basically like, down and now why am I at the school that did that's like this is your best chance of graduation you want to graduate you want to go on in life you don't want to be here another year two years or whatever you don't want to be a dropout you need to be in a school the turnaround by November the turnaround by January especially in May when they were um, completing those classes and they was getting closer and closer to the finish line 
it gave me so much joy that I had such a big hand in this. Mm. To see those kids graduate, to see those students who weren't even ready to graduate. How many, we had about four 11th graders who graduated early. I'm gonna wow. say 98% of those students mm -hmm. who were out of cohort were back into cohort and they can choose to stay at my school or they can go to the mainstream school. Mm -hmm. So that gave me the fulfillment. This is why it's like, wow, not only am I educated, but maybe this is my purpose for right now. You know, I'm a bit like you, Principal Caffelli. I do something and then I achieve that goal when I'm ready to move on, you know, so. Okay, good. That's <laughs> so, so uh, I always say that's, that might be my toxic trait. I don't know what it is, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I do that. So um, once, once, once I was like, okay, this is the key. I found the formula, you know, so now year two, I'm just going to improve yeah. upon this formula. And, you know, I'm going to get more kids. So now, you know, right now, as it stands, we have 56 seniors, 56 seniors. Wow. You know, the nice. national capacity of my school is 120 students, but we have 56 seniors right now. And, and, and um, you know, my, my goal and my dream is for all of them to graduate and take advantage of the opportunities that we have. But even if we don't, we, we have a, a program in place for them who, who, who just can't hack it or whatever life circumstances are, whatever mindsets they have. We still have a program for them, even if they aren't successful in that environment. So, um, yes, that, that's, that's what it is for me. That's what yeah. propels me. That's what makes me feel like a winner each and every day. And, and that's what brings, I bring the fire every day. Um, I'm in that building and I speak it. I meet with them. I have personal relationships with them and their parents. I do an intense interview process. I have to have that interview because I need to know and see who you are from the beginning. And I, I need to know that your parents are a part of this equation. You know, parent involvement is key. And and I, and, and they, parents know me. I call parents up myself. I, I'll mm -hmm. do that. I, hands on, I'm visible. I'm there as soon as they walk through the doors in the morning and I'm walking in them. I'm 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 bidding them a good day. They they know who I am and I have an open door policy Amen. for parents, teachers, students, or whomever. Sounds like the place to be. Yeah, and that's yeah. good stuff. And that, that population increased and uh they, they got you right there. You know, I got um, I got one more. Got one more for you, Principal Chase, and then we go to our rapid fire questions and wind it down. Um, here you are. I could I could literally ask the same thing. I I don't even think I have to ask, but but five years from now, you didn't see yourself at, at the preschool academy for sure. But now here you are, and and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong on this, Principal Chase. But in my mind, as I was putting together my agenda today. I, I wrote a note to myself that this is probably it, it. I'll just put it this way. This is probably the most important, the most significant assignment that you've ever had in education. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, it may not be the one you love the most because I, I know your passion for teaching history. But I'm talking about the significance and the importance. This is probably the most important work you've ever done in education. Because you have the babies and you have power in a, in a school with babies. You're the leader. And, and, and that's, I wonder, like I'm, I'm sitting, I literally was sitting over there putting this together for the past, when I was home the past few days. And, and, and I said to myself, I wonder, does, does Chase realize the weight on his shoulders? And you, and you probably do. Right. I'm sure you do, because. And I'm preaching now. I know that I'm going to stop in a second when while they're with you. You and your team are literally determining. Outcomes. And when mm -hmm. I say outcomes, I mean life's opportunities. Because those foundational years are so important. So I spent a lot of time talking to preschool in kindergarten teachers I, that's part of what i do and i'm reminding them it's all you you the college professor the university professor that's written a hundred books this this got a zillion degrees is not as important as you hmm. and they, they they never heard that before they're not used to hearing that you know i'm like no one ever told us that no no you matter more mm -hmm. than they do the authors all these books you matter more than they do because you're the one that's laying the foundation, right? 
So, so let me get off my sermon now and ask you this question. <laughs> Given who you are as an educator, as you, as you clearly articulated for us, but also as an activist, what is the significance of what you do? You, Principal Hubert Otto Bakari Chase, and the only reason I didn't say the other name, I don't mess. I don't want to mess up the pronunciation, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't spell it, but I might mess up. So let me. Just... What is it? What? So, 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 so again. What's the significance of that for you? Given a preschool academy in an urban school district that is the foundation for so many other schools in that district as they move on to different levels. Talk to us. So, you, you know, it, it is, it, it, it's, it's such a joy working in this environment. And five years ago, I was a principal of an alternative school. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so to go from that yeah. to this was a tremendous uh, mental shift that I'm still doing because this is only my second year at this pre preschool level. But you just said the word, and I'm going to share what I said to my staff when we opened. And based off of, you know, when I watched the track and field championships this summer, mm -hmm. and I likened it and I looked at education. And I said, education is a 14 year relay race. Mm -hmm. It's a 14 year relay race. And I shared this with my staff. You know, we don't know what year five, year 12, year seven would look like, but we can guarantee our scholars, the youngest of scholars, have a strong start to their educational career. And if we give them a strong start, we set the foundation. And that's the word you use. We set the foundation for them yeah. to be successful throughout their educational career. Yeah. You know, and it is vitally important for them to have a strong start and a solid foundation. And this is where I am now in immersing myself fully within the world of early childhood education and in preschool. Um, and the two things I bring, number one, is that uh, racial cultural identity. But the other aspect that I've always been um, focused on is literacy. But in the preschool, we're now at the very beginning of building literacy. And we're building literacy culturally. Mm. So we're going to build our children to be able to be literate, to be readers, but to know and begin to understand themselves. So it's, mm. it's amazing and it's important. And then the last part is... They got the um, right one in that position, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Give thanks, man. Give yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the, the last part to this for me was what sold me. When my supervisor came to me and said, you know, you're going to be going to, to the preschool. And I said to myself at the time, what am I going to do with these babies? Right. So that's what I said internally. Mm -hmm. But I also learned something. Things don't happen to you. They happen for you. So then my next thought is, what am I going to do with these babies? and expanding my mind. But what she said was, they have never had a male at the very beginning of their educational journey. Mm -hmm. So I said, wow, that's deep. And I see the, I see the importance of it and in modeling of it. So uh, like, like um, you talked about Dr. Smith's need. I'm in the morning, I'm very visible. I make sure mm -hmm. I'm visible in all the schools I worked at. I make sure I'm visible for students and parents, but I am there and making sure, and I'm affirming our, 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 our young scholars, making sure they see me, they know me, they feel me, they hear me, and I'm supporting them. I'm saluting them. 
Um, if I could share with you what our affirmation is, you have time? Yeah, go ahead. So, um, the name of the school is Augusta. So they repeat after me, and then I have some students do it. I am awesome. I am unique. I am grateful. I am unstoppable. I am smart. I am talented. I am Augusta. And then we say, I will succeed three times. I will succeed. I will succeed. And I let them know you most definitely will. You are all that and then some. And I add some more to it. We do that every day. And they do it. When, so we have presentations. So each um, class must give a presentation. So this month, for example, they're going to do um, two classes. They're going to present Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, and Christmas uh, collectively. Of course, we have Black History Month. We had uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. So the class presentations, this is giving students voice, um, even at that age. The teachers have them uh, create a little skit, song, uh, whatever. And before that, we lead that. The students may lead it. Um, and so we're building community so that the parents can 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 see it. And I'm 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 deeply involved with our parents and making sure they understand it and they're aware. I'm there, and I'm um, someone said it earlier before a servant uh, leader for them, making sure that 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 I'm present, I'm visible, and we're celebrating and we're building that community with the parents as a part of it, not an outside entity looking in, but actual part of what we what we're building there. So um no five years ago I I, I wouldn't have said preschool me. Uh, but now um you know I love it. I wake up with 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 that fire, you know, to go in there and um you know learn what I can and then bring what I know and then marry the two yeah. to build uh, what needs to be built, and that's a that's a strong start and a solid foundation. Woo! What a blessing <laughs> for those youngsters, and and you know you you the two of you are like you know polar opposites, so to speak. You know mm -hmm. you got you got the pre K, and then there's Smith Sneed all the way up to not only high school but alternative. Mm -hmm. But I I, I I I can say to you sincerely that your students are blessed to have the two of you, as I was blessed to have mm -hmm. the two of you. In, in, in my initial years as a principal. You know, it's, it's interesting as I articulate that and, and given what I said before about having to have you in that building to teach those two courses, I wonder who I may have evolved into if you weren't in the building. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, because my, 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 you know, despite whatever successes I had later and particularly at North Tech, my claim to fame is always truth. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I reference more so. You know, I got all the awards mm -hmm. at North Tech, but I don't reference North Tech the way I do truth, to Journal Truth Middle School, to be exact. So, but that was the two of you with those courses, man, because I mm -hmm. came in there with that vision. And, and, and I had two people who could do it. And in your case, write the curriculum, Chase. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah. I just, you know, I just had a vision. I'm not the one in the classroom teaching, you know, and putting it on the map, making history. And, and of course, we all know that it's very underdocumented. We know that James, right. James Tumay himself got on my case about that, you know, but uh, maybe, you know, God rest his soul. But maybe at some point I'll make it happen, you know, at some point. But hey, let's 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 go into these BAM impact questions real quick. We go 10, 10, and then and then we'll do the same one on the last one. One sentence, no commas, one sentence or one word answers. Start off with Dr. Smith Sneed. Is education on the right path for underserved children? No. Can true equity occur in America schools for black, brown, and un other underserved students? Yes. Does Dr. Detria Smith Sneed's work contribute to the progress we desperately need? Absolutely, and it will continue to do so. If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? I'm a little bit different. A little bit different. Why do you continue was... to do why why do you continue to do the work that you do? Because it's my purpose. It's it's, it's what the most high has done for me and 
put me in those positions to touch lives and, and make the world a better place and make the community a better place. I tried to escape it. I couldn't. So it is what it is. And I'm, I'm great at what I do. <laughs> what fires you up within the work that you do? I'm um, seeing children succeed and, and the life up that going on in their face and um, just the sense of accomplishments for themselves. And they think they couldn't and they prove to themselves that they could. What do you absolutely love about the work you do? I love touching lives. I, I think that um, educators, teachers are sowers. We sow seeds and we water those um, seeds and we see um, the growth over the years. And then they come back to us as adults and we, and we see everything we invested in. What do you dislike about the work you do? Um, politics. What has, been your greatest, <laughs> what has been your greatest victory in this work thus far? Wow, that's that's hard. I, I think my greatest victory. Um, I think who is so many. I guess right now, and I'm gonna say my work right now, establishing this new school and the success that it has. Yeah, that's big. And what was your greatest mistake in this work thus far? Um. Not taking advantage of the opportunities that I had before me when I was younger, thinking that I had all the time in the world to do things and, and not understanding that um, you hit while the, the, the iron is hot. You strike it. The, you don't think that you always have until tomorrow. Love it. Love it. Principal Chase, what has been your greatest challenge in this work? My greatest challenge. Wow. Um I guess my greatest challenge is is uh, really really having full full support, making sure that we have full support in what I'm trying to do. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? Yes, I am. Are you proud of your first year as a principal? Yes, I am. Who inspires you in the work that you do? Both of you, most definitely. Uh, <laughs> Principal Kofele, Dr. Dietrich smith -Sneed. Um, You know, I'm I'm inspired by all the all the scholar warrior historians that laid the foundation before before us. Absolutely. What are you reading right now? Book, blog, post, article, tweet, anything. I just finished reading The Dream Keepers by uh, Dr. Gloria Latz and Billings. And I'm reading my, these textbooks from his doctoral dissertation work that <laughs> cost an arm and a leg and we barely use them. <laughs> I understand, I understand. What book do you recommend for our viewers this, this afternoon? You know, the one that I would recommend um, from yours, uh, stable, all of your books, but definitely um, closing the attitude gap. Oh, man, I appreciate that. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I need to revise it too. It's been 10 years. Um, what do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? What do I want to accomplish? Have yet to accomplish that. You know, I hear you ask these questions to others, and I always think, okay, I got that answer. <laughs> now it's coming at you, right? It's different now. <laughs> oh man. Uh mm. I guess just keep building um scholars, man. Just yeah. keep mm -hmm. building and 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 getting the transformation. Here's what I'm going to say. What I want to accomplish that I haven't accomplished yet is truly having a culturally responsive pedagogy, African-centered pedagogy become established within the American education system. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Are you satisfied with where you are right now professionally? No. I don't mean, I don't mean in the school, just where you are as a, as a leader. As no. An no. All right. All right. What could you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors? When one door is closed, many more is open. 
I love it. What could you say mm -hmm. to a viewer out there who's lost their fire? Go back to the time, the year, the date when you had that fire and remember what was the thing that gave you that fire and reach for it. Wow. Wow. Last one, uh, Principal Chase first. If if each if if Principal Chase was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Culture. Dr. Detria Smith Sneed, if 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 Dr. Detria Smith Sneed was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Woman king. Woman king. <laughs> 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 Hey, y'all, 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 y'all did it. Hey, to the fam out there, you know how we do. I see you started early, and that's always a good thing. Let us know how 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 this session was for you. Give us those emojis, whatever your favorite emoji is. Just hit us up, fire us up. Give us those emojis. I see them coming. They've been coming. I see them. I see them. Let me get my emoji out here. I use the big bat here, my Louisville slugger. Y'all hit it <laughs> out the park. Some of y'all might not know what I'm wearing out there. You know, when we think about Josh Gibson, who hit the 800 plus home runs he yeah. played for the Homestead Grays, but what 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 fewer people know is he also played for the for the Pittsburgh Crawfords. So this is also uh, Josh Gibson's jersey. So you know I'm feeling like Superman with this bat in my hand. I feel like I could hit it right out of Yankee Stadium. So uh, here we go, y'all hit grand slams every time. That's uh that's 16 runs batted in for both of you. Outstanding stuff, outstanding. And of course today's session was personal. Because, uh, you know, we go way back to my beginnings as when even using Principal Kefele. But here we are, you know, so I, I appreciate you. Uh, there are folks on here that may want to talk to you. So how can they um, get in touch with you, even if it's just social media? Start with you, Dr. Smith Sneed. Yes, you can reach me on social media on on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm on Facebook. Um, you could also, um, you know, go to the, the school district, um, Plainfield Public Schools. You can type in my name. You'll see everything that come up. Detria Smith Sneet. You'll see all my works. You'll see my dissertation, my publication of my dissertation. You saw all the things I've been doing in the last couple of years. It pops right up. Wow. I Google myself every now and then. <laughs> That's important. I do it. Yeah. I do it every week because I got to see what's out there on me. Pictures, mm -hmm. everything. You know. Yeah. Same thing, um, Principal Chase. Um, Otto Bakari, at, at Otto Bakari, I think on X, um, is the hyphen in it all or, or no one word. Okay. So well, at well, Otto Bakari. Yeah. At Otto Bakari on X, uh, LinkedIn, I think is the same. Um, all my names are on Facebook and, uh, Instagram, but, um, Peace, my brother KZ. Peace, peace, man. Shout out to Dr. Stallings as well, yeah. Dr. Dawn Nicole Manning. Yeah, I think um, you can you can you can find me that way, in 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 those those platforms. It sounds good. Sounds good. Well, let me say to y'all, thank you immensely for being here, blessing the platform in week number one hundred eighty nine. I appreciate you, and we're gonna do it again at some point because there's so much more to talk about. Um, and I want to thank everybody out there for being here for 189 weeks. We're going to go strong again for 190. So let me let me just do the rundown. Y'all stay on even when I go off and so we can holler off mic. But um, join me next week, y'all, for 190. I got this brother that I've been knowing for a minute, Dr. Marcus Stewart, executive director of elementary schools in Kansas City, Kansas. Um, we're going to have a great discussion. I was there speaking one day. And then he followed up and spoke to it was all administrators, principals and, 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 and assistant principals. And he started talking to him about a topic, which I'm going to share later. And I said to him, I need that on my platform. So we this was like back in the summer. and I didn't have an opening until December. So this finally that date is here. So we'll be together next uh, Saturday to go one on one. So tune in at 1055 Eastern time every Saturday morning. Facebook live. Sean Hurt, 10 o'clock. Create and educate with Dr. Sheikha Houston and Tammy Taylor. That's Dr. Tammy Taylor, 1030. Unlock the middle with Principal Josh Tovar. That's when you see MPA Jaguars. Those of you to see that in the comments, that's Josh mm -hmm. Tovar and Dean Packard. And then Village Leadership Group with Dr. Roz Gaskins and her sister, Coach Williams, every Tuesday and Thursday at six. And by the way, um, Sean, 
Tammy, Sheika, Dean, and Josh. We're going to do an end of the year, December 30th session. So just put that on your calendars. We're going to talk about everything. But what primarily we're going to talk about support from our families and friends but as leaders. Like, what, is, what does that look like? Right. But we're going to talk about a little bit of everything. I'm like every question that people have been throwing at me in different places. We're going to talk about. Right. So that's going to be December 30. Just put that or whatever the last Saturday in December is. Y'all know I don't take off for Christmas. I don't take off for New Year's. I don't take off for Thanksgiving. I don't take off for my birthday. I don't take off for nothing. I was in Jamaica. Where was I on my birthday this year? Jamaica. I did this on my birthday in Jamaica. Right. So wherever mm -hmm. I am, but so that's what we do, y'all. They all know days off. That ain't cliche with me. It's real. Right. No freaking days off. Right. Um, make sure you get my books, man. I'm not going to put them back on the screen. You know what they are. Get them. Uh, and then make sure you subscribe to the AP and New Principles Academy um, YouTube channel and like and follow the AP and, U and AP and New Principles Academy Facebook page. That's where the written commentary is. I get up in the morning on Sundays early, man, and I write this, whatever it is going to be, and I post it not later than 10 o'clock. I've done about 110 of them now. So, um, you know, so that's that's become my blog. I don't use my blog page anymore. I use the Facebook page. So make sure you check those out. And then lastly, your diet, your exercise, and your COVID-19 precautions. I was on the plane real quick, y'all. I was on the plane the other day, and, you know, sometimes I board the plane. I forget to put the mask on. But 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 somebody in front of me, they 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 they, they sneeze right, and then the person to the right, not directly next to me, but across the aisle, he coughed. Man, I reached in that bag so quick and put that <laughs> mask on. I don't care if they offend it; it don't matter, right? I for, I should have had it on before I bought it, but I forgot because you know you're feeling good and all that, and you ain't thinking about a mask. But once I heard that sneeze and that cough, I'm like, yo, <laughs> right. So make sure you're taking care of y'all, man, because it's a lot of stuff out here. It's a lot of disease out here. It's a lot of virus out here. So make sure you're taking care of you. But get that exercise in, man. Last night, I was out in the dark doing my three miles, man. It was cold. I had the gloves on, man, the, the thermal pants, the thermal jacket, the, the, the cap, everything, man. I'm going to get it in. I don't care what the weather is. I'm going to get it in, and I'm going to tell you why, and then I'm going to close out. Because I want to live to see another day. That's, That's it. Right. That's, all I, that's all I got, y'all. That's all I got. Like my man, jo Dr. Joe Sanfilippo says, that's all I got. Right. So uh, look here, y'all. I see you next Saturday at 1055 Eastern time. Other than that, have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist all the way back. Count the three. One, two, three. three. Bam! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see y'all next week.